Hey everybody, it's me, it's me, it's Maddie, Maddie, Maddie D. And I am back today to do a, another review of a, another ECW TV show. It is the second WWE ECW, that is a mouthful to say three times when you're drunk. The second episode of WWE's ECW show from June the 20th, 2006. Now, this is the show I just dropped a review a couple of days ago for the original first episode of WWE's ECW product where there was a lot of hope after an amazing one night stand too where Rob Van Dam defeated John Cena to become the WWE Champion and a couple of days later was unveiled as the ECW Champion as well. So we had a hardcore battle royal in the last show when Sabu defeated John Cena to become number one con or sorry what am I talking about? Sabu won a, an Extreme Battle Royale to become the, uh, I guess, number one contender to face John Cena at Vengeance. Basically, they were just wrestling for the prize of fighting John Cena, which is a pretty cool prize. You know, it's a marquee match at a big, hyped-up Raw pay-per-view in Vengeance. And um, so Sabu won that match. There was a bit of chicanery with Edge and... Um, taking out Rob Van Dam and then he was thwarted by John Cena and then John Cena kind of thwarted both Rob Van Dam and Edge and it was it was a good show you know there was there was the bad you know there was the famous ooh, zombie segment there was Kelly Kelly's expose which is very meh you know it's it's it it is what it is <clears throat> and um I think there was a quick uh a quick squash match it was Big Show versus somebody. It's kind of bad. I only I only did this review just. To, oh no, it was it was Kurt Angle versus Just Incredible. Sorry, of course Big Show was in the Hardcore Battle Royal. So we're into the second episode of ECW, and we start off now. J just just a quick note here from this June twentieth edition. ECW yet again was taped around the same time as SmackDown. So the same night as SmackDown, same arena. So obviously that did lead to that led to. The fans being kind of anti-ECW, things were kind of watered down yet again. Looking back in hindsight, you know, I know the ECW shows didn't sell well, the, the standalone ECW house shows, but the only way to keep that spirit of ECW, in my opinion anyway, would be to have had, you know, um, to have had ECW taped by itself where there's fans there who want to see ECW. They want to see an extreme show, but I know logistically it, it didn't make any sense. This episode got a 2.3 rating, which was down from the inaugural ECW's 2.79 rating. And unfortunately, you know, <clears throat> things are going to go downhill from here. So we start off with Ariel, who's not introduced as Ariel just yet, playing tarot cards and she is recapping ECW's Invasion of Raw from the night before. It shows you that RVD sneaked over the barricade and took out Edge. Sabu came and destroyed John Cena by leg dropping him through a table in an iconic spot that I remember really, really well. I did say in my last video that I was a bit of a... I, I was young, you know, I was a, a young Mark, I'm still a Mark, I'm just not young anymore, and I was really, really against this ECW invasion. I thought ECW were coming to take over and it, it wasn't fair, you know. Um, so uh, Sabu came out and absolutely destroyed John Cena, you know, hit that off the chair somersault, off, off the top rope leg drop through the announce table, <clears throat> and Ariel announced that later on tonight, in our main event, Rob Van Dam, the ECW and WWE Champion, and Kurt Angle, both from ECW, would take on their vengeance opponents, Randy Orton and Edge, before rated RKO. Um, so this is kind of an ECW versus Raw match. It's a, you know, four really good, iconic, ruthless aggression wrestlers. And... Um, I was excited for this main event, you know, it, it sounded good. So Joey Styles and Taz are here as usual. I do love this commentary team. And the mat the show starts off with Sabu making his entrance for a match. They show official, or uh, 
what's what's the word for exclusive footage from WWE.com that shows you John Cena's bloody eye after Sabu's attack on Raw, which looks devastating. Then we have the full blooded Italians, Tony Mamaluk coming out with his manager Trinity. It's so I, I watch a there's there's a guy on YouTube called Marky e. D who sounds like I've stolen his gimmick to be honest that that was unintentional but um Mark Marky e. D does TNA reviews and Trinity can really go in there you know she had a feud with Kid Cash there wasn't very many ladies on the the TNA roster at the time so Trinity was kind of wrestling the men and she was so good and it's. Uh, she looks the part with the FBI, you know, obviously, like I say, I wasn't a ri an original ECW viewer at the time, so I thought Tremadie had maybe just always been with the full-blooded Italians, but no, that's a completely different decision, but I just, I kind of wish Trinity had been used more, you know, if Trinity came around nowadays, when women really, really do get a chance to, you know, to show what they can do and to main event things, Trinity would have, I think she would have done very well, but, you know, and, she, and she's billed as an ECW vixen. ECW are doing this whole thing where they call the, the ladies on their roster vixens instead of divas. Uh, just a way to differentiate them, you know, and show like the, the wrestlers aren't superstars. They're not wrestlers either. They're not superstars like Raw and SmackDown. They are extremists from what I can remember. So they are trying to kind of differentiate WWE from ECW and I have to applaud them for that. <clears throat> but anyway... Tony Mamaluk makes his way to the ring and make no mistake, this is going to be a squash match. Sabu is going to win this one and win it easily. So Sabu surprisingly starts off with some chain wrestling, which we don't see too often, and then hits a nice kind of leg drop off the rope. Uh, off the rope, sorry, that Sabu is known to do so well. But Tony Mamaluk kind of turns it around with a knee lift and actually takes a bit of control. Um, Tony Mamaluk crashes Sabu into the turnbuckle. Sabu kind of counters a corner attack with a boot to the face and then hits that slingshot, le slingshot leg drop yet again. Uh, Joey Styles teases there has been rumours that John Cena may appear on ECW and Sabu actually puts on his, his, gra his, ah, goodness, I should know this one. I think it's, it's, it's Sabu's uncle, the original Sheik. Sabu briefly puts on that camel clutch move that the original Sheik so famously invented and it's, it, it, it's, it's nice to see that, you know. Sabu kind of keeps up the offense, hits a baseball slide to Mamaluk on the outside and it, it is all Sabu here. Sabu grabs a chair, jumps off, off it onto the top rope and hits this really nice triple plancha on Tony Mamaluk. Sabu sets up a table but Mamaluk sends Sabu into the ring, kind of you know, kind of so Sabu can set that table up, but they can explain the spot happening later on, you know, because what was Sabu going to do with the table on the outside of the ring? It's very warm here. <laughs> so anyway, um, Tony Mamaluk hits Sabu with a chair and climbs up to the top rope and this is a pretty cool spot. Tony Mamaluk jumps off the top rope and Sabu, who has the chair that he'd been hit with in his hands, literally throws it at, to at Mamaluk and it hits him square in the face and it's just a really, really good counter here. Good spot. Tony Mamaluk, or Tony Mamajuk as I've said in my notes here, <laughs> then <clears throat> runs ringside but Sabu kind of pushes Tony Mamaluk onto the table, you know, to set it up and then hits that slingshot leg drop to the back of the neck. It looks absolutely deadly. You know, Sabu crashes through that table with the leg drop and then Sabu, he kind of, you know, pushes, throws Tony back into the ring and locks in the camel clutch for the tap out win. So Sabu celebrates and then he leaves and quite surprisingly, no John Cena entrance. It's just a way of kind of reaffirming what Sabu did on Raw, you know, the, the table spot, the leg drop to John Cena, the, literally the biggest star in the company at the time. And just reiterating that Sabu will be a threat at Vengeance, so that is really, really clear here. But anyways, we then cut to, you know, after a pretty good squash match, like a five out of, no, like a six out of ten, we cut backstage to Kelly Kelly, who... Brings up her striptease from last week, and I, I hate talking about this. 
Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's just so, it just feels kind of awkward to me, so, something along those lines. So anyway, Kelly brings up her strip tease from last week. Kelly says that she was so excited to be on ECW on Sci-Fi's debut that she took her bra off and she promises to show their fans everything tonight. So <sighs> it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, Kelly, Kelly was hard working. She eventually became Divas Champion. Everything worked out okay. But this is a, this is a weird start. Sorry, my, my hairband's kind of annoying me. Um, so anyway, we cut back from the commercial and the camera has a nice camera shot here. It is focused on somebody's waist who is the WWE and ECW champion and it's revealed to be Rob Van Dam, which we knew as soon as we seen those title belts. But it's a pretty cool shot, just slowly panning up to RVD's face. RVD, in his own words, is your favourite wrestler and mine, Rob Van Damn, I love that. I love that taunt and I always will. It's I cherish it. Except for in the old the old SmackDown versus Raw games, whenever it took forever for Rob Van Dam to do it. So and by then, you know, your opponent had got back up again probably and beat you up and you'd lost the match or something along those lines. I much preferred for my creator wrestlers those taunts were the cause kind of shake their shoulders for about two seconds and then they get the same amount on the meter that Rob Van Dam would. So anyway, sorry, I'm sidestepping side, side this here. So Rob's very confident for the tag team match tonight and for the title match against Edge Vengeance. With Cena versus Sabu, with DX reuniting to take on the Spirit Squad in the main event, the WWE Championship match, even though it's a big match, it kind of feels like the third most important match on the show, which isn't a great start for Rob Van Dam, but it's a big match, you know, and it's, it's, I remember it's a very good match from memory. RVD finishes off his segment with a nice little tease, a nice little kind of reference to his whole 420 stoner thing. He says that he needs to get rolling, if you know what he means, or I need to get rolling, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so that, that, that was, that was pretty cool here. Anyways, the Big Show is next to make his entrance to the ring. The band that performed Big Show's newest theme, the theme, the version of the Well, it's the Big Show theme that we are most familiar with is kind of standing around ringside. I think they've just actually unveiled this new theme for the Big Show whenever he joined ECW. The band is called Brand New Sin and they, they look crazy. They're kind of fighting with each other. They're kind of doing the whole like knuckle sandwiches on the head. And they look so kind of mad and out there that Taz actually comments, or sorry, jo Joey actually comments that um, they brand new sin would fit quite well on ECW. So that's um, pretty cool. But anyways, the match we have here, or at least I thought it was a match, is the Big Show versus Tommy Dreamer. Um, Ta Joey Styles says that he has some news that on July 4th, ECW is returning home to Philly and I'm looking forward to see, it's July 4th, sorry. On July 4th, ECW is returning to Philadelphia where ECW had its, its roots basically, that was where the promotion was based. And I am really, really excited and kind of tense to find out what these new fans think of ECW. So Tommy Dreamer comes to the ring and he cuts a face-to-face -face promo with The Big Show who eliminated Tommy Dreamer as well as eight other wrestlers in the Extreme Battle Royal last week on the inaugural edition of ECW. And Tommy Dreamer says to Big Show right to his face that if Show wants to make a name in ECW, then he's got to go through Tommy Dreamer first and then... Tommy Dreamer hits the Big Show with an almighty slap and you can really tell here that Big Show has got no problem going through Tommy Dreamer first. Dreamer slaps Show, as I've said, and a punching fight ensues that Tommy Dreamer is pretty much on the losing side of already. The, the match goes to the outside, or the, the brawl goes to the outside, and Big Show throws Tommy into the steps, then throws Dreamer into the barricade, and then Big Show is so relentless that he picks Tommy Dreamer up and crashes him back first, spine first, into the steel post. Tommy Dreamer rolls into the ring and he's really selling his heart out. You know, I, I, I don't know what Tommy Dreamer does nowadays, but uh, he probably 
could have been more just based on how well he sells, how much heart Tommy Dreamer shows in the ring. You know, I'm a big innovator of violence fan, or I was back in the day anyway. Um, Dreamer's still trying to punch the Big Show, but it's to no effect. Big Show hits that, that huge knockout fist on Tommy Dreamer back whenever it wasn't show's finisher. And... That's why Tommy Dreamer's on his knees, by the way. Big Show hits that Cobra clutch, sl clutch Slam and chokes Tommy Dreamer out before throwing Tommy Dreamer to the ground after picking him up. Yeah, so he just kind of tosses him like he's a rag doll. It looks really impressive. Tommy Dreamer, for whatever reasons, you know, is a is a heavier wrestler. You know, he's not like, he doesn't look like a, a small cruiserweight or anything. And Big Show just throws him around with the greatest of ease. And it is a really good beat up. Uh, the bell never rang. So it's more kind of portrayed as an organized showdown between the two, more than, you know, more than a match. And we see as Big Show leaves and Brand New Sin does the, well, it's the Big Show theme. The Big Show leaves and Tommy's still kind of clutching the rope and looking at Big Show. You know, he he's still alive despite the absolute mauling he got in this, th this fight. And it makes Big Show look like an absolute monster, which is credit that he's going to need very soon if anybody knows the history of ECW. And Tommy, you know, he was beat up, but he was beat up by the Big Show in his supposed prime. So he, he, he looks tough here. We see some quick highlights of Kurt Angle making Randy Orton tap out at one night stand too in a really, really good match. It was a fantastic match. I love that pay-per-view. It's absolutely brilliant. I would I would recommend anybody checks it out. And then we see Kevin Thorne kind of going <sighs> like he's Abed from Community, flashing his fangs and looking at the ECW sign menacingly again. Ooh, what's going to happen here? So next up, we have some kind of Mexican luchador music and a slightly heavy luchador makes his way to the ring. The luchador's build does Macho Libre, which is a kind of play on the Nacho Libre movie with Jack Black in it. In fact, Taz and Joy Styles comment that Macho Libre certainly doesn't look like Jack Black. <laughs> and um, it's very strange you know his mask has sunglasses on it and then he cuts a very strange promo saying spanish phrases like living la vida loca while also kind of doing a, a randy savage impression because get it you know he's macho libre so he's macho man libre so he has to do Ooh, yeah and all those macho man things and I, i've been reviewing wcw obviously and this is a it's an insult to the Macho Man, as, as far as I'm concerned. It, 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 it's it's not the end of the world. It's a parody. That's all there is to it. But it's just, it's such a waste of time. So, Macho Libre says that he's looking for a fight as the Sandman's music hits. And he makes his awesome, fan interactive, completely like nobody else out there entrance. And it hits himself with a beer can and all of that there. I love the Sandman en Sandman's entrance and they actually play an inset promo where Sandman is talking very briefly. He says that he loves drinking beer and chasing women and if anybody stands in the Sandman's way they're going to get that Singapore key and so he's very clear in his, his motivations. Sandman wants to drink beer and chase women. He doesn't want to be ECW world champion. He doesn't want to main event Wrestlemania. He just wants to drink beer and chase women. So Ugh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I do love Sandman's character here. So Macho Libre continues in per his impersonation when Sandman goes into the ring and gets absolutely whacked by the cane in the head, same as the zombie got last week, and then gets beaten on by that Singapore cane again and again and again. It's the, almost a, a copy of the, the very brief match against the zombie. And ECW's first ever match as part of WWE... It's a shame. <laughs> Sandman, again, same way as last week, hits his white Russian leg sweep for the pin. It's nowhere near as good as last week. It's the same thing. It's not original. Nat Macho Libre has nothing on, <clears throat> nothing on the zombie who is just legendary. But that inset promo was really good. Zero for this. It's not a match, you know. 
Then we cut to an interesting segment. Paul Heyman is backstage with an ECW referee and they do a wee, you know, a fake conversation where Heyman basically says, the only things you need to do in this show is count the pin and, and, um, pay attention, you know, like, end the match for submission. That, that's all there is to it, even though in no short time at all, all Extreme Rules, that rule of ECW gets swept under the rug very quickly and very soon. But that segment, that, that promo doesn't last very long. It's just a couple of lines, you know, a fake conversation. And another referee approaches Paul Heyman to tell him that John Cena is backstage. So the champ is here, the former champ is here. Paul Heyman, he kind of gets the cavalry together, demands that, um, you know, that the referee gets all the whole ECW locker room there so they can meet John Cena at the pass as we cut to a commercial break. After the break, Paul Heyman is backstage with most of the ECW roster. There's Kurt Angle, Sabu, Balls Mahoney, Rob Van Dam, Stevie Richards, Little and Big Guido. And I think Danny Doring, and he's kind of just giving the, the riot act, giving the pep talk, you know, how dare John Cena invade ECW. If he turns up here, we're going to beat him up. And at that exact point, a very intense, very serious John Cena comes through the fire exit. Cena's still got a busted eye from Raw last night, and he looks really, really badass. Cena does the whole, you know, Rob, Sabu scumbag to, to Paul Heyman so he's still showing a lot of contempt here even though Cena is quite respectful in his approach. Cena compliments Sabu for his stunt on Raw you know being put through the table and he says that he has an offer for Sabu and the offer basically is that Heyman can bring his entire roster if he wants because John Cena is challenging Sabu to an extreme lumberjack match which sounds really good you know better than a normal match. Sabu He's in a lot of pain by this stage. He's, I don't know if he's on painkillers or, or what the crack is, to be honest with you, but he's kind of not really, like, he doesn't last particularly long, maybe a year or so in this run. And I think it's best to, you know, to dress up his matches with gimmicks and weapon shots and chairs and things like that. So there's going to be an extreme lumberjack match. Paul Heyman has to hold back Sabu. As John Cena says, he kind of explains his logic, you know, he says that he doesn't mind facing the entire roster, he knows he's going to get his ass kicked, but all he wants is a chance to go down swinging. So that makes him look like a fantastic baby face. It, it, it really does. He, he knows he's going to get beat up, but he just wants a chance at Sabu. So that, that, was, that was very good. And Sabu says literally one word, and that word is deal. And then the rest of the roster just let John Cena walk away. So quite an intense, quite an enjoyable segment here. Sabu, you know, is that kind of silent, only a couple of words, killer basically. And John Cena shows why he's the top babyface in the entire company by, you know, giving a good reason for the match and just being fantastic. He's big match John, what else can I say? So next up, Kelly Kelly is introduced again. She's a, an ECW vixen as well. So we have three women on the roster now. We've got Ariel, Kelly Kelly and Trinity. And Kelly's kind of being the best used, which is kind of sad. But anyway, it's time for Kelly's expose. Kelly, she, she kind of dances very awkwardly around a chair and this goes on forever. Kelly, I, I don't I think I said last time in my last review that she wasn't actually, Kelly wasn't a trained dancer or anything. I think she was just picked up from a modeling catalog. So she doesn't really know how to dance particularly, but it, it goes on forever and she dances against the chair. There's a song playing and it's supposed to be very kind of sexy, but the song's hook is basically just Saturday, 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 repeated over and over and over again. It's a terrible song. Eventually, Kelly takes her top off. You know, she has her, her bra on still. And she has, she, she takes off her pants and she has, you know, like the kind of underwear on. It's, it's very awkward talking about this, you know. like, um, But anyway, Kelly does the whole, you know, turns her back and removes her bra and then covers her her boobs but then suddenly you know before she can expose any more because this is this is still prime you know cable television 
it, Kelly, before she can take anything else off, this big bearded man goes onto the stage and puts a towel over Kelly. And you can just hear the CCW fan shouting, let her finish, let her finish. So he was obviously very invested in this, this expose, but I, I, I certainly wasn't. <clears throat> the bearded man is Mike Knox here, and he starts his whole gimmick of getting heel heat by essentially just stopping Kelly Kelly from stripping. You know, that is his gimmick. He's a possessive boyfriend. He only wants to see Kelly for her, you know, for himself. But Kelly wants to show everybody herself. It's a very basic, very kind of, you know, simple storyline. But it's it, it's not a great simple storyline, you know. But the, the, her boyfriend is Mike Knox. And I might have just said that literally a minute ago. And we will see a lot of him for the next year or so. So we better get used to Mike Knox. Because he is going to be here for a while. Taz and Joey Styles are very annoyed by this by the way. They are pretty pissed off that you know. Um, Mike Knox dared to spoil this lady exposing herself completely on national television. We see a quick recap of ECW last week when... Edge speared the absolute life out of R Rob Van Dam after Rob Van Dam kind of turned his back to Edge and it's just a bit of a recap you know to add a bit more heat to this match tonight I think that's what the Kurt Angle making Randy Orton tap out segment was also for and next up we have a pretty cool promo airing it's for test and it's just showing you him destroying people. I was a big fan of test in any CW whenever I used to watch it kind of semi regularly. I had no idea who test was beforehand. I'd never, you know, heard of him. I he was gone for quite some time and he just kind of randomly popped up on ECW. But this is a good segment, you know, the test, test, test. Uh, you know, back like constant repeating and his theme song, it makes him just look like a silent killer. And I think it's really what, you know, it's just a shame that Tess didn't achieve those heights he could have with this character because he just comes across as such a, excuse my language, dick here. And he, he, he comes across as somebody very unpleasant and unlikable that, you know, you wouldn't be a fan of, to be honest with you. And it really worked for me at the time. But anyway, we'll we'll see test very soon. So it's now time for our main event with 18 minutes left on the clock, but you know, before the entrances start. So we've got plenty of time for this one. <clears throat> Edge cuts a promo saying that ECW and their fans suck. That's literally all he says is that ECW sucks and anybody who likes ECW sucks, and that's the entire promo over. Nice and short and sweet. Then Randy Orton comes out to the ring. Edge, Lita and Randy Orton look really good together. And the commentators did point out that this is the very first time those two men have ever teamed together. Obviously, they would become rated RKO. He would become a very popular heel tag team on Raw. You know, two bona fide main event heel badasses in the same team together. It really worked out well. And you would wonder, you know, if that was the inspiration for getting Orton, Edge and Lita together because they certainly work well in this in this match. They certainly, you know, look good together. And speaking about things that look good, Rob Van Dam looks good with those two titles. I love that kind of pan, panning up shot of RVD earlier on. And um, it's very short-lived RVD having both, both championships. So it's something that I, you know, I kind of cherish seeing in this very short period of time because I think we've got one more episode of RVD as champion and that's it, you know, so it's it's kind of kind of depressing. But anyways, Ed starts off the match with Kurt Angle and what chemistry these two have had in their career, especially whenever Kurt Angle was the heel and Edge was the baby face. They were so good together. Kurt Angle starts throwing Edge around RVD and Angle double team Edge, but Edge kind of turns it around and does a quick double team with Randy Orton. Rob Van Dam hits a really good looking sidekick to Orton and celebrates with the, the Rob Van Dam taunt that I love except for in SmackDown vs Raw. Rob Van Dam hits a really good leaping sidekick to, to Orton. Which I just said about, sorry, there's another leaping side kick very soon. RVD hits that moonsault press on Orton to the outside. This is good so far. RVD is in pretty much in 
I know it wasn't long until he was done now, but at this stage, he's in such peak condition. He's so motivated. He's doing such a good job. He's flying all around the place. He's working hard. It's a very good match. But anyways, Edge finally gets in and that was the sidekick that got it. So R RVD sidekicked Orton and then Edge. But Lita kind of sends RVD to the outside by pulling the rope and Rob Van Dam falls out of it and we cut to the break. So he just gets the momentum coming into the break and after the break it continues obviously. They show a replay of Lita choking RVD on the ropes during the break. Edge kind of distracts the referee during that and Styles does point out that, or sorry Taz points out that it is extreme rules so it doesn't matter anyway. But you can already see, you know, that ECW is moving towards, you know, further and further away from the extreme they promised and more to that WWE style tag match. This this was very, very WWE style. As good as it was, it was an amazing match. I loved it. But it felt less and less like ECW as time went on. I, um, where, where was I here? Sorry, in my notes I've Try and keep detailed notes of this stuff because it's very important what happened in a tag team match 15 years ago. RVD is, or sorry, 16 years ago. RVD is hurt. You know, he's doing a good baby face in peril. Edge hits a, um, hits a, tries, basically hits an apron sledgehammer on RVD into the announce table and then throws Rob Van Dam into the steel steps. So Rob is getting properly beaten up by this stage. Orton comes in and hits that amazing high elevated drop kick that he does so well to Rob Van Dam. I love Randy Orton's drop kick. It's up there with, you know, probably Mark Dindrak as the best drop kick in the business, you know, from back then anyway. It's such a good move and it really does lay out RVD. Kurt Angle is desperate to come in. He's really, you know, trying to motivate Rob Van Dam here. RVD hits a spinning heel kick on edge and makes the tag to Kurt Angle who comes in like a house on fire. Kurt hits three German suplexes on Orton. Edge kind of teases not wanting any, you know, kind of backs away, but then runs into the ring, but straight away it's a German suplex himself. Kurt Angle rolls through on Orton to lock in the ankle lock. There's lots going on here. Edge kind of desperately pulls Randy Orton out of the ring and sends Kurt into the middle rope. It's very intense, very fast-paced, very hard-hitting. Edge goes to the top, but Angle... Yeah, that's right. Edge goes to the top rope and hits one of those moves where you jump off and if it's not reversed, you don't really understand what they were going for to begin with. But um, Kurt Angle reverses it anyway into a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Very good, very intense. Angle goes to the Angle Slam, but there's a chop, chop block from Orton. Orton then starts working on Kurt Angle's knee, you know, Kurt's targeting Randy's ankle but ahead of their match at Vengeance. Randy's targeting the knee. It's really good stuff. We are in a heat wave in the UK, so I am dying today. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. But um, yes, Randy's working on Kurt Angle's knee. Kurt Angle desperately needs a tag. You know, now, now he's the baby face in peril. He gets thrown out of the ring. He's selling really hard. It's kind of sad because Kurt Angle was so close to the end of his WWE career. We know he was, you know, Kurt said himself that he's had addiction problems that by this stage he was miserable and popping, you know, 120 painkillers a day. Terrible, terrible things like that. It, and you just wonder how much of Kurt's selling is actually real pain, which makes it a hard watch, but he's still so good. Kurt gets a chokehold on Edge, but Lita basically makes the save yet again, you know, attacks Kurt Angle. Orton comes in and Angle gets Corton's, or, Corton. Angle gets Orton's ankle, but Edge comes in and makes the save so Randy and Edge just keep saving each other. Lita keeps doing the save. It's really good heel work. The baby faces, you know, it's almost like like in terms of the, you know, their match. They're better. They're better in the ring, but they just, you know, with that numbers advantage with Lita with the heels dodgy tactics, they just can't get going. Edge runs in the angle in the corner with a big boot and Kurt Angle hits another German suplex and gets the hot tag on Rob Van Dam. RVD's a house on fire here, just like Angle was. Edge goes for the execution, or the execution, sorry. RVD hits a windmill leg kick, then dives to the outside on the Orton. He's going everywhere here. 
Rob Van Dam is just on fire. Van Dam is amazing here. He grabs a chair on. Grab, yeah, grabs a chair when he's on the outside, but Randy kind of pulls on RVD's leg, and RVD just throws a chair right into Orton's face. That was a oh, that was a hard shot from Rob Van Dam. Edge kind of um, knocks RVD into the announcer's table yet again, and Joey Styles just says, "Oh Jesus!" Styles sells things like this so well. It's it's kind of. It's kind of sad that he didn't make more of himself on the mainstream, mainstream level as a commentator. But I think Styles kind of, he wasn't, yeah, he, he, he just kind of was burned out. Like, he, he I, I don't know if it was something he wanted is, is what I should say. And I know Styles kind of thought the product was very quickly. Joey Styles knew that the WWE, the WWEification or whatever the word would be, of ECW just wasn't going to work out. Kurt Angle locks the ankle lock on Edge, but later the runs into the ring with the ECW title. Kurt Angle dodges it and hits an angle slam on Lita for a huge pop. Absolutely, that's the biggest pop of the night when Kurt Angle hits his finishing move on Lita. Lita is so badass. She takes the bump like an absolute queen. The place goes ballistic. The Kurt Angle pulls the straps off, but Randy Orton slips into the ring and hits that RKO from behind, from out of nowhere, that we're all so familiar with. Randy celebrates too early here. He celebrates, even though Kurt Angle hasn't lost the match or anything, and eats a kick from Rob Van Dam. And Randy just, he sells it like a champ. He's down on the ground. RVD goes for a rolling thunder on Randy Orton, but Edge reverses it with a drop kick on Van Dam. Right when RVD is in the midair, it is an amazing spot that I didn't see very often. It really is. You know, this match is so good. I, I can't I can't underrate it or, or over, overrate it enough. I would advise you all to check it out. It's only, what, 15 minutes, 13 minutes on the WWE Network. It is so good. It's just it's just absolutely amazing. But after that spot, Edge gets himself psyched up and goes to the spear. But RVD reverses it with what I think is a backfist. Later on, replays do show that it was the ECW title that Lita had dropped that RVD somehow has in his hands. And he just absolutely clocks Edge with it and then climbs up to the top rope. Hits that five-star frog splash on Edge for the one, two, three. That was such a good match. I absolutely loved it. 9 out of 10. Best match I've seen in ECW so far. An absolute barn burner, barn buster, whatever word you want to use of a match. Really, really good stuff. Then, as the match finishes, RVD and Angle celebrate the win to close off a great main event. And Rob Van Dam looks so good heading into Vengeance here. I it makes me wonder what would have happened if the you know the drug bust hadn't happened with Sabu that ended up costing Van Dam both the WWE and the ECW World Championship. I, you know I think Edge always was going to win that WWE Championship back, if not you know on Raw like he he does eventually on Saturday night's main event, but it certainly I don't think RVD would have lost that title as quickly as he did, and he would have been a much bigger player on ECW, so that was a bit of a shame. But that was, you know, it was a it was a meh kind of show, except for that main event, which made it completely worthwhile. The, the Kelly stuff, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to get those, that kind of edgy audience to tune in. They're trying to put Mike Knox over. The only thing I really, really can't stand so far is all of the... All of the stuff involving, you know, somebody coming out to the ring and the Sandman beating them up. It was great with the zombie, but that should have been a one and done. And I think there's still a couple more of these segments to go over the next, or matches in fact, or not even segments to go over the next couple of weeks. But anyway, really good main event. Okay show. But that is, this has been me, Maddie D. Like I say, um, thank you very much for checking me out here. Uh, hopefully I haven't gone on too long. I did spend about 10 minutes describing that match, but boy, was it good. So this has been my review of the second ever ECW. I am now going to probably take another cold drink, to be honest with you, because boy, is it warm in Northern Ireland right now. And then I'm going to go to bed because I've got work tomorrow for the first time in quite some time. But you have to make a living, you know. But anyways, this has been Maddie D. Maddie D's ECW dream, Maddie D goes extreme, and thank you very much for checking me out.